Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. The Lamentations is about the betrayal of God and his son, the bridegroom, as we see in the parable of the tenants, and it's basically a part of all the parables. The parable of the sower, bags of gold, um, you know, the ten minas, okay, and go on and on, right? The parable of the wedding banquet, right? A wedding banquet, the bridegroom. So as women are prostituting themselves to other gods, as the Bible says, as they're dating wicked people, as they're shunning me, as society, especially the churches, didn't put me you know, front and center for all to see and explain why I'm right in a way that's fair and just and right. Okay, God punishes these people forever and cuts them off, okay, so that they're walking dead in the flesh and they go on to the realm of the dead after they've been weighed carefully to see exactly how much they deserve to, pun uh, to, be, excuse me, to be punished. Lamentations 4. How the gold has lost its luster, the fine gold become dull. The sacred gems are scattered at every street corner. So it's talking about their treasures, right? You know, the family jewels, if you say, but it goes beyond that kind of immature explanation, right? You know, it is, it is, you know, the, the people themselves, okay? We see in verse 2, it says, How the precious children of Zion, once worth their weight in gold, are now considered as pots of clay, the work of a potter's hands, okay? So now the devil is their potter. And they're being made evil. They're being made like Set, right? Like jackals, like Zeus, raped by deception. Set is a rape deity. Zeus, Baal, they're all the counterparts of each other. Jupiter, Jew, Pit, Ear, uh, the, the main deity of Rome. Even jackals offer their breasts to nurse the young, but my people have become heartless like ostriches in the desert, right? And it says in the Bible that ostriches carelessly lay their eggs for wild beasts to trample. So they're betraying their offspring by their marriages, by their dating processes, by who they're suppressing and who they're elevating, what have you. Because of thirst, the infant's tongue stick to the roof of its mouth. The children beg for bread, right, the presence of God, but no one gives it to them. After I'm gone, there'll be no one to give it to them. Those who once ate delicacy are destitute in the streets. Those brought up in royal purple now lie on ash heaps. The punishment of my people is greater than that of Sodom, which is which was overthrown in a moment without a hand turned to help her. So again, sexual immorality, not just LGBT, okay? Not just gays having sex with each other and getting married and pretending to be of God, right? Okay, and leading people astray by their actions, whether they claim to be religious or not. Okay, because when it says Sodom, a lot of people will think of that, right? They'll think Sodom and Sodomite and the story of Lot. It's all sexual immorality. For example, a lot of people don't know this, but oral sex was also considered sodomy by the church, okay, by the Catholic church at least. And that's not the only proof. It, the bottom line, if it's sexual immorality, like it says in Revelation, they're outside the gates. And all marriages that are outside the divine order are extreme sexual morality because they have sexual implications. People get married and have sex, right? And they're pretending to be of God. So when you're having satanic sex and you pretend to be you know, having a, you pretend to have a valid marriage, especially with a, a scale of white supremacy when it was the white Romans who killed Christ with the, with the Jews who betrayed him. In the story, Herod, Caiaphas, Pilate, the soldiers that mocked him and spit on him. Okay, so then you're pointing to the people who symbolically killed Christ. I don't care what race you are, but you got to think about the principles. And then you're pretending that their culture is magically divine while they're still trampling the poor. And after I'm gone, it won't matter what they're doing. It will be a continuity of pure evil. Okay, so the punishment of his people, right, of all races, especially whites and Jews, LGBT, for the reasons I spoke of before, because it's being compared to Sodom and it's the whites and the Jews that killed Christ in the story, and it was their cultures that's killing everything decent on the planet, first and foremost, and other cultures factory, but it's first and foremost there, like colonialism, uh, corporate partnerships, you know I'm right, the most racist person who wants to say I'm wrong knows damn well I'm right, and shame on him for wanting to say I'm wrong, right, hello, wake up, right, okay. And of course it says in the New Testament, right, the one who knows better will be beaten with many blows. Their princes were brighter than snow and whiter than wealth in terms of whiter in terms of, you know, like the stars, like the morning light, in terms of being righteous, right, as opposed to walking in the darkness, right. Their bodies more ruddy than rubies, their appearance like lapis lazuli. But now they are blacker than stick, uh, excuse me, now they are blacker than soot. They are not recognized in the streets. Their skin has shriveled. On their bones, it has become as dry as a stick. Now, is their skin literally shriveled? No. 
okay it's saying spiritually speaking right the flesh being symbolic um, in some context we'll say to keep it simple of the presence of something so the presence of wickedness is there and it's rotten and it's shriveled and it's darkness right those killed by the sword are better off than those who die of famine racked with hunger they waste away for lack of food from the field with their own hands compassionate women have cooked their own children who become their food when my people were destroyed so you see how the answer isn't conservatism or uh, uh, democraticism if you will because they're not really open to new ideas and thinking clearly or else they would focus on the individual rights they would see the moral order and they'd obey god through me right so they're not really compassionate when they say with their own hands compassionate women they're compassionate in the sense that they they're kind they're caring are you okay and stuff like this but they're following the devil so they're figuratively cooking their children and their children have become their food in the sense that they're leading them down the same wicked path that they're on and they're becoming dark and contorted and twisted and it's rather abhorrent what they're doing their cultures are pernicious right they're malicious they're evil the lord has given full vent to his wrath he has poured out his fierce anger he kindled a fire in zion that consumed her foundations the kings of the earth did not believe nor did any of the peoples of the world the enemies and foes could enter the gates of jerusalem but it happened because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquity of her priests who shed within her the blood of the righteous. So it's the collective group of the people, right? Who they choose to be the king. And that's the entry point, right? The king has been compared to a mountain like Mount Zion, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, where they said to go up and do something holy, right? Receive the Ten Commandments, pray, what have you. Okay, but instead they chose a king who's a mountain of evil, Baal, Dagon, Asherah, what have you. And so evil's coming into their presence, into their souls and just consuming them. And it kindles a fire, and wickedness burns like a fire, as it says in Isaiah or Jeremiah. So the Lord has given full vent to his wrath. He has poured out his fierce anger. He kindled a fire in Zion that consumed her foundations. Instead of having righteousness and justice, wickedness and falsehood is, uh, are the foundations. And again, wisdom walks in the way of righteousness along the path of justice, Proverbs 8. And since that cannot be done, if my flesh dies, their, their souls keep burning. People should not reproduce. The kings of the earth did not believe, nor did any of the peoples of the world, that enemies and foes could enter the gates of Jerusalem. But it happened because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests, who shed within her blood, within her the blood of the righteous. So to shed the blood of the righteous is more than one way. If you shun them, you're shedding their blood. You're casting them out, right? Instead of their blood mixing with yours in a way that's righteous, fair, and just, you're trying to get them to settle. You're trying to get them to gay. You're telling people to shun them. Okay, so you're shedding their blood, you're casting them out, you're getting rid of their blood, you're not including their blood in a way that's fair and just and right, which means you're using the scale of the demons, deities that they worship, again, like Baal, like Zeus, like Set, what have you. And like the false conception of Horus, instead of Horus is universal pinpoint and moral precision in the Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order, Amos 9, 7, Genesis 10. Nahum 3. Now they grope through the streets as if they were blind... They are so defiled with blood that no one dares to touch their garments. Go away, you are unclean, people cry to them. Away, away, don't touch us. When they flee and wander about, people among the nations say they can stay no, stay here no longer. So the people see their state and they have become a byword among the nations, as they say in, in some of the scriptures. Okay, so they say, hey, they're calling them names, right? They call them devils. Okay, they call them names. And I want to call them names, you know, here because of the rules but it's mostly aimed at the white jews and lgbt community right they're called the people of sodom okay they're in this kind of roman culture remember zeus's main equivalent okay is Baal and set right Baal, the main adversary of god in the bible okay so if god is mad at Baal worshipers how much more the bell that rings the loudest? It's even called the bell, right? The bell that rings the loudest. There's the most common, right? There's western cultures, white western cultures, judeo-christian culture it's the broad path to destruction instead of universal pinpoint and moral precision and the accurate interpretations of the scriptures the lord you know in terms of the morally precise interpretation not some endless tree of knowledge bullshit where they you know say well i'm a i'm a hebrew and this is what they meant fuck what they meant fuck what the authors meant jeremiah 8 8 says fuck your authors fuck your scribes fuck what you thought it says the lying pen of the scribe says it falsely i don't give a shit what the scribes thought even the disciples were mistaken and disagree with each other it is the precise interpretation from God. He who is far above the disciples, he who is far above the Jewish prophets, that's me. The Lord himself has scattered them. He no longer watches over them. The priests are shown no honor. The elders no favor like I just did. Moreover, our eyes failed. 
failed is, if lead scrambled who's leading right the righteous one or, or your bare flesh based mere human rules customs and traditions garbage looking in vain for help from our towers we watch for a nations that for a nation that could not save us my people excuse me people stalked us at every step so we could not walk in our streets our end was near our days were numbered for our end has come now they do things to cause me to slip on my words believe it or not they want to say oh no no that was god confounding his speech no it wasn't that was not God, and the speech they're talking about is their action-based speech. Read Psalm 19, you know nothings. You who follow mere human rules, customs, and traditions, you think God is on the clan side of the debate? He's on, he's on you know, the president's side of the debate, the church's side of the debate, when they got together and lynched black people and got together and, and had Martin Luther King assassinated with the government and governing class? No, God despises your side of the debate. Even a kid should be able to tell you that. Wake up. Stop being immature. Grow up and stand for what's right. Instead of being some kind of groupy punk that only stands with the masses for what's wrong or gets pissed off from some kind of sissy, kind of period-having complex, male or female-like, okay, and throwing a fit and dying on your own for what's wrong. Okay, use your fucking heads. Okay. People stalked us at every step so we could not walk in our streets. Our end was near. Our days were numbered for our end had come. Our pursuers were swifter than eagles in the sky. They chased over the, us over the mountains and lay in wait for us in the desert. Again, the mountains, the kings, right? They chased, us, they, they chased them with the kings. Okay, they chased them literally in, in some cases over the mountains, but it's talking about figuratively they're being chased by the evil spirits that they've allowed in by following the wicked and trying to value their flesh-based life in this world instead of principle, which would have led them to being martyrs and, and rallying to me and whatnot. Okay. The Lord's anointed, our very life breath was caught in their traps. We thought that under his shadow we would live among the nations. Okay, so they're following a wicked person. You know, so like Saul was referred to as the Lord's anointed in uh, First and Second Samuel. But he's not really because he's, he's rebelling against God. So he's caught in their trap. Okay, he's not talking about me. But in the sense that they're all persecuting me and they're suppressing my videos... But it's not the same thing, okay? Because I'm triumphing. All victories are in principle, what have you. Rejoice and be glad, daughter Edom, you who live in the land of Uz. But to you also the cup will be passed. You will be drunk and stripped naked, right? No righteous acts. Your punishment will end, daughter Zion. He will not prolong your exile, but he will punish your sin, daughter Edom, and expose your wickedness. Again, the parable of the wedding banquet. They didn't have the fine linen to stand for the righteous acts of the saints. That's clarified more in Revelation 19. Thank you.